Hello there, my fellow Imperial cartographers, and welcome back to some Warhammer Fantasy lore. It has been recently brought to my attention that my pretty old at this point series of videos on the Empire Provinces was actually incomplete. It does turn out that, somehow, I forgot to cover a major and founding region of the Empire, namely Stirland. So even though these videos don't really get that many views, I still try my best to be as thorough as possible with any given topic. So today we're gonna learn about Stirland to complete the series. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Bounded by the World's Edge Mountains on the east and the north, west and south by the rivers Stir, Aver, and Reich, Stirland is a rugged province of very mixed terrain. Its reputation as a rural backwater is largely undeserved though, for it has many towns of substantial size and it does a brisk trade with the dwarves of Zufbar. Nevertheless, its location away from centers of power and the presence of the dreadlands of Sylvania nearby make people think ill about Stirland. The northern portion along the banks of the Stir are covered with the last reaches of the Great Forest. Ever since the end of the Vampire Wars, the province has been given the rights to all the lands of eastern Sylvania. While essentially this doubled the size of the province, it did little to improve the province's fortunes. Indeed, the province of Stirland is a relatively poor region in comparison to its neighbors like Averland or Wissenland. To the east, beyond Siegfriedhof, the forest thins down and breaks into separate woods, the feared hunger and grim woods places of equally foul reputation. It is from here that the lands become enshrouded in unnatural fog and harsh weather. Past the grim wood, there is a dismal village that marks the start of Hell Fen, the place where Imperial forces long ago destroyed the army of Manfred von Karstein at the end of the Third Vampire War. The west is dominated by the Stirhügel, a hilly country that was the first home of the Starigan tribes thousands of years ago. Crossed by the old Dwarf Road and the Nuln Road, the hills are mostly home to villages and sheepherders who trade in the markets of Flensburg and Warden. Hidden among the winding tracks and foggy vales, however, are the tombs of the ancient chieftains of the Starigan tribes. Dug into the hillsides or built as turf-covered barrows, these date from pre-imperial times. The entrances are well hidden by their builders although sometimes one of these entrances can become exposed by rains or flooding. Locals consider the tombs cursed and avoid them, and it seems every village has a tale of their own of someone who has gone missing while investigating the final resting place of the so-called Old Kings. Nevertheless, treasure hunters and necromancers both seek out the tombs of the Starigan, each for their own very different reasons. It is the east of Stirland that holds the rest of the province in genuine dread, however, for it is there that one finds benighted Sylvania. From the somber town of Tempelhof, which has not had a resident priest of more in more than eight centuries, to the foothills of the World's Edge Mountains between the Aver and the Stir, the largest region of Stirland is a place of fear and gloom. It is said that ghosts walk freely at night among the haunted hills, and the deep fogs of Sylvanian woods are said to sometimes trap souls inside them, forced to wander there forever. The eastern portion of the province is the bleakest, where ancient black castles sit among the craggy peaks. Sylvania is a place that most Sterlanders try to forget about, and the Elector Count's tax collectors only come calling when accompanied by a small army. Even the dwarves of Zufbar avoid Sylvania, preferring the road south to Schramleben and through the moot if they want to travel to Wurtbad, the capital. Descended from the Asseborn tribe of old, the Sterlanders are a short, thick-set people, much like their Ostermark neighbors. Dark of hair and suspicious of strangers, their bloodline has remained one of the purest in the entire empire. Some folk point out that that is because they're inbred peasants, but as the Sterland nobility are keen to point out, even the most baseborn soul can trace their line back over many generations. Famous for their superstitions, Sterlanders are definitely a cautious lot. 
Also said to be overly rural and backward, Sterlanders are often mocked by the rest of the Empire, particularly for their slow speech and slow pace of life. For their part, the folk of Sterland are proud of their preservation of ancient custom, and their long view of life. At their best, Sterlanders are calm, and practiced at taking their time when doing anything. Fond of long, lewd tales, the local tavern is the heart of any Sterlander community. It is here that people gather to hear their favorite stories, the local gossip, and sometimes news of the outside world. Racing is also a favorite activity of the Sterland people, although not the traditional foot or horseback racing liked by the rest of the empire. As many communities of Sterland are based about arable farmland, it is geese, cows, pigs, and even dogs which are frequently racing against each other in local competitions. Usually held on a festival or market day, the winning creature is often awarded ribbons of reprieve, meaning that it will never be destined for slaughter. At their worst, Sterlanders are isolationist, suspicious, and very conservative. However, they see themselves as simply keeping tradition and nothing more than that. They worked in the past, so no reason to change now, as Sterlanders like to say. They find it difficult to make friends, often taking years to accept a newcomer into their community. Most of the Empire sees them as savages simply because of their custom to drink hot ale. There are many other odd customs. For example, when strangers approach a village in the Sturhugels, children will throw pig droppings at them in the belief that this will drive away the evil spirits. They believe that a person hit with a tossed pig excrement is especially protected. In the villages closer to Sylvania, the houses and windows are lined with an especially pungent strain of local garlic, to ward off what are euphemistically called the Count's men. When someone vanishes, locals will always swear that the fault lies with the garlic. Sterlanders in the central territories of the province are known for their dislike of the halflings, for they still resent the 1500-year-old decision that tore away their best farmlands and gave it to the shorties. Although this resentment barely ever breaks out in violence, the belief that halflings are thieves at heart is stronger here than in any part of the Empire. In fact, in Verdern there is a tradition when celebrating a child's birthday. They make a straw man the size of a halfling and stuff it up with candies and treats he stole from the children. Then it is hung from a branch and the blindfolded children whack at it until the halfling gives back their candy. Locals definitely deny the stories that sometimes they tied up an actual halfling instead of a straw man. The people here are also fatalistic, accepting that life has a dismal end in store for them. So resigned to this destiny are the Sterlanders that few ever leave the province, much to the relief of their neighbors though. Visitors often find it difficult to get around the rustic accent and very slow speech of the Sterlanders for they often repeat their questions and usually spend a lot of time pondering before answering. Mummers often use a mocking form of the Sterland accent when representing a slow or particularly rural character in a play. As mentioned before, Sterland is a poor province with rustic customs. Thus, most of the soldiers are usually equipped with cheap and simple weapons and armor, mainly longbows. And their uniforms, if one could even call them that, are quite crude. Many of the regiments wear the colors green and yellow, often testimonially, since their clothing is usually very torn and patched. In some other cases though, the nobility of Sterland goes out of the way to do the opposite, equipping their personal troops with the best money can buy. The banner of Sterland shows a skeleton blowing the hunting horn, representing a call to arms. The skeleton is quite a common symbol in this region both as a graphic expression of the Sterland battle cry, victory or death, and as a sinister reminder of the land of Sylvania. This is considered a prominent territory of Sterland, but actually revealed to be a dangerous and semi-deserted place where the dead never rest. Another symbol is the warrior maiden, which can be seen on the banner of many Sterland regiments, dating back to the founding of the Empire. The tribe that controlled the lands along the Stur in Sigmar's time was ruled not by a chieftain, but a fierce warrior queen, whose name has long been forgotten. 
Although she died at the Battle of Blackfire Pass, it was her son who took the title of Elector Count when the Empire was founded. And this equally fearless leader is still remembered in ancient songs and on the banners of the province. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the province of Stirland from the Empire for today. With this, I do hope I managed to complete our Empire Provinces series properly. Although, technically there's still Sylvania, even though it hasn't been practically part of the Empire for a very long time. If you guys would like me to though, I will still make a video on that too. I don't actually remember if I actually covered the province, or just mentioned it in association with other topics. Anyway, I welcome any of your thoughts or questions on the Stirland province in the comments below as always. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, share and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching, and the blessings of Sigmar be upon you.